Thank you. Uh, good evening. Welcome to uh, our Audit and Governance Committee this evening. Uh, my first uh, item on my agenda is actually to welcome our new man. Uh, so welcome to this uh, committee, Paul. Uh, I know you've only been a council a few days, so uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And uh, as I say, thanks, thanks for coming tonight and let's see how we do progress. Right, uh, our next <coughs> item is, uh, do we have any apologies? I am aware of one from Richard Kingston. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, he did write to me this afternoon, so I shall write back to him tonight. Nobody else? Um, right, the minutes of the previous meeting. I assume that you've all uh, downloaded and digested them and read them and accordingly. Happy to move those, Mr Chairman, if it helps. <clears throat> Thank you. Moved and seconded. By Andrew Coop. Yep. All right. Happy days. All those in, all those in favour? To the contrary. There you go. Uh, right, our next item is. He did read it. Um, declaration of interest. Oh, should we? Well, you know, it's six o'clock on a Wednesday night. We're all interested. None. None. That's good. Um, our next item, item four, is to actually uh, receive our next um, report which is the Internal Audit and Standards uh, and External Quality Assessment Report. And that is tonight is in the hands of uh, our Audit Manager. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present my report on Internal Audit's recently completed External Quality Assessment of the Internal Audit Service. To maintain compliance with the public sector internal audit standards, internal audit is, re is required to be externally quality assessed at least every five years. To comply with the standards, this review was undertaken in December 2022 and January 2023, and the findings of the review are contained in my report as Appendix 1. The external quality assessor provides an overall assessment of the service against the public sector internal audit standards and identifies both good practice and recommendations to enhance the service. To facilitate this, may I introduce Robin Pritchard from Business Risk Solutions, who undertook the external quality assessment and will provide a presentation to you of the findings of his review and will respond to any questions that you may have. The, review, the, re, the executive summary is contained within Appendix 2 of my report. Thank you, Robin. If I pass over to you. Good evening, everybody. I hope you find this exciting, but you'll have to wait another five years until you get another one like this. So, uh, so there you go. Um, I was only going to say a few words this evening uh, by in introducing the, some of the plus points and then perhaps focus on some of the recommendations uh, and then take any questions that, that members might have regarding the, the body of the report. So you'll, you'll see on the first slide that I've given a generally conforms um, uh, assessment and I'm afraid in normal audit speak that's as good as it gets in terms of the standards. So uh, congratulations to Andrew and, and, and uh, the team um, and that includes both the internal staff and the external contractors that, that, are, that are engaged. Um, it's worth saying though that the standards are more like guidelines rather than strict rules and whilst there are words like must do within the standards uh, there are thousands of different ways that internal auditors use to actually comply with the standards. So what this assessment is really about is a, a professional judgment as to whether the, the service being provided complies or not in, in overall terms. So on the second slide, um, you'll see what I've highlighted as the areas for good practice. And, and I suppose to sum it up, I mean, the, the service is, is well set up and established. Uh, it's got appropriate internal resources for, us, for the councils of this size uh, and is appropriately supported by external support, both with regard to general audit and with specialist IT work. Um, it's got its own methodology, which has developed since Andrew, since Andrew came, uh, and it assesses itself in terms of whether it is complying with the standards uh, and therefore puts together a development programme to ensure that it, it continues to progress. Uh, and hopefully, um, what I've been saying to Andrew over the last few months will add to that development programme. Um, the one thing that's probably worth saying is that um, it was as well to get this done now because shortly to be introduced is a new set of global internal audit standards which probably take internal audit to another level. 
So the, the challenge for Andrew and the team going forward is to have a look at the new standards, if they are adopted in the UK public sector, and then hopefully the, the recommendations that I have been making will go a long way to, to making sure that there's compliance in, in five years' time as well. Um, in terms of areas to improve, um, the things that are popping up here at Tamworth and Litchfield on the next slide are common areas that I'm finding within local government. So the, the thrust throughout most of the report reflects the use of internal audit of a risk-based methodology. And it's clearly best if the terminology and understanding used by internal audit matches and mirrors the uh, risk, risk appetite of the council and the clients, and therefore the terminology that Andrew uses within his audit reports matches probably the risk impact uh, definitions within the, the council's risk management process. Um, I think it's fairly true to say that there's a different level of maturity in terms of risk management at the two um, organisations that Andrew works with, and therefore at the moment there is certainly progress that can be, be made by the team in terms of relating the difference between inherent risk before controls and the residual risk that's being uh, um, analysed by, by management, and then Andrew using that in terms of putting together the annual plan in order that he focuses upon what is what is regarded as the most significant risks to the, to the councils. Um, there is a recommendation in the report that talks about um, recognition of management's objectives and one of the must-dos within the standards is that at the start of the audit, the auditor recognises what management are trying to achieve and therefore assesses and discusses with management what are the significant risks that those objectives can be achieved. And I think that's a particular focus for the team um, going forward. Um, and the only other comment was to, to have a look at the, the narrative that's used within the annual report, because I think the way that Andrew does put his um, audit plan together takes account of what work has been done in previous years as well as the work that's been done in the current year uh, and therefore you can take as an audit committee continuous assurance rather than just have assurance based upon the, the, the work during the, the, the last year. Uh, and then the, the final comment on the, the last bullet point there reflects trying to make sure that the annual report supports the annual governance statement made by the, the councils in terms of reflecting on the significant risks that each council faces and the other sources of assurance that are available to Andrew in terms of making his Head of Internal Audit's annual opinion. Um, in terms of the overall outcome on the, the final slide, which you'll see as a, a diagram, that really reflects uh, the, the, the narrative on the first slide, which showed that Tamworth and Litchfield's performance overall is pretty much exactly on the average uh, scores for the local government clients that, are, that I've reviewed during the last 12 months um, and there are 35 of those that, that I've done. So I think for a team of two um, it is a good performance and you should regard it as such even if we recognise that there is still more to do particularly in terms of these new global internal audit standards that are coming in uh, and therefore the detailed report really just gives Andrew a pointer as to where those, um, those scores have dipped in, in that um, top, top category. Perhaps that's enough from me, and happy to take any questions that members have got. Firstly, I'd like to say thank, thank you for that uh, synopsis. It's, uh, it's really good. We have spoke, Andrew and I, uh, about this report. And now, questions? Yeah, um, I'd just like to say um, thank you, uh, Andrew. You, your work over the two years is clearly evident in this report that it's shown a betterment. Um, I've, I've been... Um, fairly quick in this committee to push and prod along the way and quite rightly so is my, in my capacity as a, a committee member of audit and governance but um, credit where credit's due you know you've, do, you've done a sterling job over two years uh, my, my question would be um, is there an overall risk uh, that uh, you, you highlight the fact that there's only two people uh, currently sitting on the committee with new uh, standards coming in place on the horizon is there is there an overall risk that, that those that those two people aren't enough and what's the and what, what is the, uh, the contingency, contingency plan should something happen to one of those two people? Thank you. Yes, that, that is always a risk with a, with a small audit team, effectively, because I do draw down resource from Litchfield as the principal auditor, who is my second, second person that I draw down um, work for. Um, one of the things that we have been putting in place is getting those procurement exercises in place so that we can draw down um, 
resource from BDO and also our IT auditor as well so that we've got specialist um, advice on that side of things. Obviously one of the things that we will, will be aiming to do is that we have extended the contract for BDO and the IT auditor into 2023-24 so the, that pl the plan work is covered in that, in that area. I think the one of the things is that we, we do look at sort of contingency planning in relation to if, if somebody leaves, whether that be myself or Principal Lords or over, over at Litchfield. And we, we do review recruit, recruitment practices in relation to, to doing that. The one thing that I would, would state to the committee is that the, the, the vacancies are there, they are, they are still open and we, when we can recruit to that establishment if necessary. The one thing that I have said to and brought to this committee uh, a number of times is that we have had issues in recruiting to um, for auditors, internal auditors within within local government, but I think that is that isn't unique just to local government. That is wide wide across the the environment, um, and I th and I would hope that with the I was going to say we're outside of the pandemic now, um, but I would hope that that recruitment side of things would would ease going forward into into the future my my initial thoughts and my initial aims are that we recruit into those vacant posts and that we'd actually deliver the service from the team that is based at Litchfield and obviously at Tamworth as well um, but again that that is that is we need to look at that going forward into the into the future because again procuring the um, the BDO services also allows us to draw down further work from them as necessary. So if there are any, any issues that we come across during the year that we need extra days, we have got the facility to draw those down during the year as well. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, that's a, it is coming. I've, I've done some reading myself. It, you know, audit, auditors across the land are, are, are a very scarce animal. Um, you know, it's not seen to be... So sexy to move from accountancy into auditing at the moment, and there's lots of resource problems and monetary. So yes, you, you're right to uh, you know call on the external uh, resource as and when we need it. Right, any more questions? Can I just support what Andrew's saying that the there is a problem in the sector recruiting senior auditors, mm -hmm. uh, and the trend at the moment seems to be to to recruit bright young things, if I can use that terminology from as graduates and then train them yourself and, and teach them the way you want to do things around here. Um, so that might be something you want to consider within recruitment. Councillor Cook. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Uh, this report is in answer to the question, who audits the auditors? <laughs> um, yeah, just a couple of comments for me, not really questions. Um, obviously, um, just about what has been said, um, my roles and functions in my daytime employment have been due an audit for three years and late last year I was asked to do a self-assessment because they just couldn't find anybody to do it. Apparently I'm awesome. Oh no. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's absolutely across sectors. I mean, I'm in the logistics sector and we can't get auditors for our, you know, SLAs and SOPs, etc, etc. It's just, it's just impossible. And obviously noting in the report, you know, when we averaged 81%, the national average was 82 It'd be very easy to make something out of that, but given the resources we've got and you know, the size of the council, it's actually, you look into what other councils are achieving, it actually it is a skewed stat because there's a lot of people down in the 70s versus very few in the high 80s, and it skews the stat slightly. So actually, congratulations to the team, off to, uh, on their performance. It's great to see on the RAG structure there's no reds. So, you know, there is some ambers, and under any audit, you're going to pick things up, and it is about learning from that. Councillor Cooper, who works in the sector in a way, always saying you've got to find something, and you've got to always be improving. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, comment for me is uh, I think it's a good read. Um, it's a very dull read, but it's a good read. Uh, it does show the council is performing and performing well. And what I mainly took from the report is there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is Tamworth's performing well. The bad news is Litchfield's performing well. And I look forward to my phone call from Councillor Pullen in Litchfield later this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, I'd like to you know, just reiterate on behalf of this committee uh, what a fantastic job you've done in two years, Andrew. You know, we have pulled it up from 70-ish you know, to 80-ish in, in a year, and we, we know where we're aiming for next year. So well done, congratulations, fantastic piece of work, and you know, keep up the good work. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, all I would just like to sort of reiterate as well is that obviously there is the action plan in relation to that as Appendix 3 of the report. And obviously the one thing that I've agreed with, with the Chair is, is to bring that forward to on a quarterly basis to this committee so that you can see the progress of the of the action plan going forward and that we're meet it, meeting that. Um, the action plan has also been uh, been agreed with senior management as well, so that so they're in full in accord with that as well. So, uh, I, my my estimate is that obviously we want to move forward and improve and get towards those that ninety percent side of things, and I think the action plan puts us on on that road. Obviously, there's there's the the new standards coming through, etc., which obviously I'll need to keep a, keep an eye and abreast of in relation to that. But again, it's it's that continual improvement, and I think that's what I want to take forward for the for the whole of the internal audit service. Okay. Yeah, you're right, Andrew. We we have focused on you know breaking into small you know digestible parts and keep moving gradually. Uh, but it is a good piece of work, and we're doing really well. So you know, yes, it is, and and we will we will you know have a few blips along the way, I'm sure, but we will certainly keep focused on this. Audit is important. Just just to follow up on the, the remarks you made. I mean, you may be interested to know that the. The poorest performer is performing at about 68%, uh, and that's a one-man band. Um, uh, and there are obvious reasons why that person is struggling. Uh, the top performing two organisations are both um, councils with two or more clients, and therefore a, a much bigger team than, uh, than Andrew's got here at Litchfield. Um, and certainly one does pay a bit more because they are competing with London prices. Um, but, but that's the nature of the game, I suppose. Uh, in terms of what Andrew's achieved here, uh, he's on par with all of the other Staffordshire performers, and some of those are some quite big teams. So um, it's a good effort. If it helps, Mr Chairman, I'm happy to move the recommendation. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was just reading that. Um, it now comes to a great part to actually... Perfect, thank you. Vote. All those in favour? To the contrary? Unanimous. It's moved. <clears throat> ah, thank you. Right, our next item is the internal, the update from the external auditors. Thank you. Um, there's just a couple of things I want to touch on, really, in this verbal update. So, 21-22, since the last time we spoke, we signed off the HB claim in January. So, that went through with its HBAP report. It's gone off to DWP now, so we met the deadline for that. The value for money work is still outstanding, but it is substantially progressed, and we hope to bring that to the next committee, which is the 20th of April, I believe. We haven't found any significant weaknesses at this stage. There will be improvements, but they're still to be discussed with management, and they will be reported in April. And finally, on the 22-23 audit, because that is now kicked off, planning is underway, and we're taking our time on the ISA 315 changes. We hope that there will be an audit plan alongside our auditor's annual report in April. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Uh, I'll open it up to any questions. Yeah, I think he's absolutely correctly summed up there. We'll get the detail we need on this uh, on our April 20th meeting, which you see later in the agenda is already uh, penciled in. So looking forward to a fuller discussion on this on the 20th of April and uh, thank the um, gentleman for the presentation. Yeah, again, thank you for your progress report. We, we look forward to seeing that as and when it's, you know, completed. <laughs> yeah. so, our next item is uh, the Internal Audit Plan and Charter. And it's, uh, again, in the very, very capable hands of uh, Audit Manager Andrew Wood. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present the draft audit plan, also the audit charter and protocol for 2023-24 for your review, uh, review, comments and approval. 
The plan has been discussed with senior management and also corporate management team at Tamworth. The draft plan has been drawn up for 260 audit days and these will be delivered from procure services provided by BDO for 60 days, the IT auditor for 20 days with the remaining days provided by the principal auditor at Litchfield District Council and myself. The plan includes the indicative number of audit days and also the potential quarter for these reviews to take place. We will however discuss and finalise these with management in due course. The proposed audit plan is contained within Appendix 1 of my report, to, together with Appendix 2 being the updated audit charter and protocol, taking into account the recommendations uh, made as part of the external quality assessment. Following the recent external quality assessment and the recommendations made, I've reviewed the planning model and directly linked corporate risks into the draft plan, which is now recorded in the plan. I've also had a meeting with the operations accountant and with the ongoing work from an operational risk side, these two elements will link to provide assurance to management and also to this committee. And it also satisfies part of the external quality assessment recommendations as well to get, get that more in, in line. During previous years, we've discussed service and operational risk with management at the briefing stage of each audit. However, as I've previously indicated, we need to bring these into alignment with the Council's corporate risks and also the corporate objectives, as alluded to by Robin earlier in his presentation. This will continue, but we will, we will review the control risks with management. Now, as part of that review, we look at the control risks, look at the mitigated controls, and then provide assurance to yourselves and also senior management that those controls are operating and are appropriate for the, for the risk concerned. Additionally, we'll be looking at the service areas concerned and providing assurance that, like I say, those mitigated controls in respect of corporate and operational risk registers are operating correctly and in accordance with the management expectations. This, this is an ongoing piece of work in relation to the further embedding of risk management at Tamworth Borough Council in relation to, certainly from the heads of service and operational side and again we will support management in that. This approach will provide a continual assessment of the Council's risk environment and further supplement the assurance processes in place. The approach will also bring the internal audit service in line with current best practice and full compliance with the public sector internal audit standards. I should comment here that this will be an approach that will be developed over the upcoming financial, financial year as further embedding of risk management is required and that is linked in with the action plan to my previous report. These steps will ensure that we are on our way forward and progressing risk-based audit across the, the authority and further embedding risk-based audit into the approach. I'm more than happy to take any questions and observations that you may have. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor Cook. Please. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was going to ask, um, how has Agile working as we move through uh, past COVID, obviously, more industries, um, and particularly the council, uh, moving towards more of an Agile working policy? How has this impacted your ability to conduct um, audit? It, it is a challenge in relation to to that because you we we haven't had any issues in relation to getting information and 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 basically get, getting the information that we we request. We are having to get information more electronically rather than shall we say the paper paper records are in the past. But then that's how we should be progressing going forward anyway in in relation to that. I think part of the. Uh, Part of the challenge in relation to agile working is that from an internal audit perspective, whilst we we do have our Marmion House days and, and we, we are there we are there sort of twice a month, you do lose that as an internal auditor of knocking on a manager's door and, and speaking to them directly. But again, you've got the team you've got the team's element and you can speak to managers directly. I think it's also it's also maintaining the the well-being of the team as well generally and make, making sure that they they any any issues that they have are are addressed. I think the other challenge as well is to make sure that we have got 
both the agile ways of working, but also have got the the ICT infrastructure to support that going forward. Um, not only in in being able to download the information, but also having the robustness of the systems in place to ensure that they're both cyber secure, but also that they're they're up and running so that we can we can get the information. So, again, agile working is a challenge. I think it's been a challenge for all sectors, not not just not just local government and not just internal audit. But again, it's developing that approach and maintaining that agile way of working that enables us to do that. And that, and I think from from my from my perspective, we we've had the challenges, but I believe that we've we've addressed those going forward. Thank you, Andrew. <coughs> Any more questions? <clears throat> yeah, it's a good point about that flexible working, as we spoke briefly downstairs, you know. It's not just, um, you know, the tasks and, the, uh, and making sure that the, it, it, it's the experience development that I see in teams now where, you know, you can't just listen to somebody's conversation and I've done that form before or, but, you know. So we do just, it's, it's a work in progress and we'll see how we all develop going forward. As, um, or we may, so, um, our recommendation for that one um, is to endorse this proposal of this internal audit. Yeah, uh, happy to uh, to move the uh, endorsement. Okay. Show of hands <coughs> to the to the country. There you go. <coughs> Oh, we now move on to the meaty chunk of it this uh, uh, evening this evening, and it's their final accounts. Thank you. Um, so our final accounts, 22-23 accounting policies and action plan. Um, so as in previous years, this report provides an outline of the corporate requirements that will need to be achieved in order to produce the Council's annual statement of accounts for 2022-23. The report includes six recommendations. So firstly, that the proposed accounting policies for 22-23 attached at Appendix A are approved. There are no changes this year, but it is considered good practice to report the accounting policies to Audit and Governance Committee each year. The second recommendation is with regards to the target date for closure of final accounts and production of the statement. Um, we recommend a recommending a target achievement date of the 30th of June this year. For the past two years, there's been an extension to the usual deadline for the publication of draft statements to the 31st of July as a temporary measure. And the government have recently announced consultation exercise with regard to extending this again. Um, this consultation was due to end 2nd of March. Um, We've not yet received any uh, results from that, so at the moment we still don't know what um, the outcome of that is. We're continuing to aim to complete a first draft of the Statement of Accounts by the 31st of May this year. However, given the significant resourcing issues experienced by external auditors over the past few years, um, we're going to aim to get our draft accounts to the external auditors by the 30th of June. Um, as the audit was unlikely to commence until July or August at the earliest, and Will has this evening confirmed the July start date. <laughs> um, the key issues affecting the achievement of the deadlines are detailed in Appendix B to the report. The third recommendation is that staffing resources are committed to the provision of appropriate information and support in order to meet the published timescales, and that committee receive progress updates if required. And Appendix C highlights the main information required from other service departments that will need to be supplied in order to meet the deadline. Fourth recommendation is that CMT receive a fortnightly update until completion of the audit. Key milestones and dates will be regularly reviewed by the finance team with any material issues or variances reported to CMT with proposed remedial actions. The fifth recommendation is that the statement is presented to this committee before the end of September 2223. Between completion of the statement in June and the conclusion of the on-site audit in September, 
a substantial amount of work will be required liaising with the external auditors to ensure an unqualified audit report. The final and sixth recommendation is that committee note the appointment of ASETS audit services as the Council's external auditor from the 1st of April 22-23. It is brought to members' attention that the audit of the 22-23 accounts will be the last ones carried out by Grant Thornton. The committee at its meeting on the 28th of October 2021 received a report to advise members of the legislative requirement to appoint external auditors for the accounting periods from 23-24 for five years to 27-28. And the option was agreed that the authority opt into the appointing person arrangements made by the Public Sector Audit Appointments, or PSAA, for the appointment of external auditors. We've recently been notified that following the tender process to procure the audit services, PSAA have appointed Assets Audit Services Limited as the Council's external auditor for five years from 23-24, with the appointment commencing on the 1st of April 23. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? Uh, not so much a com uh, question, but a comment. Um, I wouldn't dare sit here and try and tell a professional local government accountant how to construct the uh, statements of accounts because fundamentally it's a skill set I don't have. Um, statements of accounts are a statement of fact. We could sit here and argue what the money was spent on, but the fact it was spent, it was spent. So statements of accounts are a fundamental fact. Um, what we've got in front of us is a very detailed report saying how it's going to be done. And I'm fully supportive of that because, I, you know, like I said, I'm not a professional. This, this council has a long running history of some very good accountants. And I mean, very, very good accountants that have kept us very clean, very professional and fully endorse what's going on here. Right. If we have no more questions, uh, I'd like to move that. The recommendations, all six of them, which you've just heard, eloquently read. Do we have a mover? Second up, and a vote <coughs> to the contrary. Yep. Happy days. Well done. Well, there we go. Our next item is actually the Audit and Governance Committee timetable. So our next uh, meeting, which is going to be the 20th of April, mm -hmm. uh, we shall have, um, obviously, Audit and Government Committee update from Grant Thornton. Okay, yeah. Uh, the public sector, public sector Internal Audit Standards Quality Assurance and Improvement Programme. Uh, the annual report from the Chair of Audit and Governance. Um... Review of the financial guidelines, uh, review of the constitution and scheme of delegation of officers, and a review of the Treasury management, management Strategy Statement, Minimum re, uh, re, Revenue Provision Policy Statement, and Annual Investment Statement, and the Treasury Management Statement, and the Statement of the Annual Investment Strategy to Mid-Year and Review Report. <laughs> um, and obviously, uh, you know, it is the author, auditor's annual report that peer, that, that on that date as well. So we've got a fair amount to do, but I'm sure that it's um, all in good order. Um, obviously, we've tried to realign our work schedule over the last 12 months to make it more, um, I don't know, balanced, balanced for all of us. Uh, so, you know, this is, I'm coming up to, you know, the first year on this committee. I'd like to thank all those that have helped and supported me over this period. So uh, I look forward to our next meeting in uh, in April. Close. Yeah. I'd like to close the meeting.